Hey guys, it's Kate and I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I was looking on Unsplash and I came across this really gorgeous sunset picture and I wanted to try to recreate that in watercolor because it's so bright and I'm just not sure. Like I've been trying to practice my skies and everything and this I think would be a big challenge for me because it's got some really bright colors mixed with some darks and I have this first attempt here <laughs> and I did a few things that I wanted to try to correct in my second try. For one, I and this just happened to be where I laid the paint, but this blue kind of makes a straight line down almost, which I didn't really like. And I lost some of my brightness over here. And I tried to blot it back a bit, but it was a little bit too late. But I'm going to try to redo this in a second try. I overworked my sky and it's hard for me to not do that because I always feel like I can make a correction but it's pretty challenging to do with watercolors especially if you're working with kind of a staining color. So I'm going to come in and sketch out my hill which comes just up like that and I'm not really worried about how dark my pencil is because I'm going to be going over that with black later. Then I'm going to grab my one inch hockey brush and give this paper a good wet down. And I'm going to put plenty of water on it just to make it have a nice sheen and let it work into the paper. And I'm even going to moisten the part down uh, underneath the hill so that my color can just spread past where my border is going to be. So I'm just making sure this has an even coat. I'm not going to have any puddles anywhere, but I will. Um, I do want to see that nice sheen. And so I'm kind of looking at my paper from the side to make sure that I'm getting a good coat and that it's soaking in, especially around the edges where I might be prone to get some cauliflowering. And then I'm just going to kind of drag my brush across and make sure that it's even. And I've got this little hair that keeps getting on my, <laughs> my paper. Okay. I think this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to put that brush aside and then I'm going to go into my color. So I've got my zero quill brush from Master's Touch and I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to be working with this uh, phthalo blue green shade here and then I'm going to mix a little bit extra here and I'm also going to add a touch of lemon yellow to give me that kind of nice aqua color. And I'm going to put plenty of water in it so that it's a nice light wash. And hopefully I don't lose my <laughs> sheen. I should have pre-mixed my colors. All right, and then I'm going to come into my cadmium red, which I don't use enough. And then I'm also going to use my purple red or possibly my brilliant purple along with some indigo. But we're going to start here at our brightest spots. So I've still got a good sheen on my paper. And I'm going to come in nice and strong with this orange. Just like this. And I'm just going to start dropping that in. And now you can see it come across a few of these other parts and kind of coming from right behind this hill. So I want to make sure to cop capture that. And then it also kind of sweeps up into this area here. Okay, now I'm going to go into my purple red and grab some of that on my mixing tray here. And I'm going to come in with some of that. And I'm going to kind of add those little lines in here. Along with some deeper color. And I'm trying to just keep that tone going. And 
Now I'm going to join this up a bit around that orange and give it a bit of a buffer because I'm going to be coming in with that blue. Now I'm going to get this watery turquoise first. And I'm going to add just a little bit more yellow to that. And come straight in right here to the color. Now where it's kind of dark, I'm going to take a little bit of paper towel and blot it just a little bit. And I'm also going to blot right here quite a bit. Just like that. And then I'm going to come into that straight phthalo blue. And come in from the top. Just like this. And my paper is still moist, but I'm trying not to have too much of that moisture on my brush. So I'm just dipping lightly in that paint. Now I'm going to come into my indigo and blend just a little bit over here to the side. And I'm going to start dropping in some of those darker cloud shapes, just like that. And I'm kind of dipping straight into my pan here for this dark one. And I'm going to have a couple of those little lines that are coming across, just like that. little bit here and some right here and I'm just going lightly with the tip of my brush I'm trying not to overwork it this time <laughs> and a little bit right in here And I'm going to add that darkness too up in this top corner and edge. And let that kind of blend in a bit. And then I'm going to come back into that purple red and add in a little bit more here. Now where I blotted, I'm going to dampen that just a little bit again and soften this edge, just like this. And I'm going to come back in and blot it lightly. Get some more of that purple red and just come in here and add that color Then I'm going to get super light here, just like that. And then down here, I'm going to also soften this edge a bit with my brush.
And I think this <laughs> looks much better <laughs> than my first attempt. All right. I made sure to keep my lights in here. I maybe missed out a little bit on the turquoise. I could add a little bit maybe in this area. But I don't want to do what I did last time and overwork that sky. But this looks okay to me. Okay, I'm still actually damp, but I'm just going to add a slight bit of this indigo up here. And since my paper is only slightly wet now, it's still got quite a bit of... It still has dampness, but it's not wet, is what I mean to say. So I can come back in here with some color basically straight from the pan, just like this, and kind of work on adding in a few of these dark areas. Again, I'm just kind of going lightly with my brush. I don't have a lot of water on it. And I'm just sort of going in and letting that paint come off. Just like that. And I'm even going to dab it right here and get sort of a mid-range color. I'm going to go over these couple of areas where I want it to be a little bit more organic looking. Now I'm going to dab my brush really well and just soften a little bit of this. Okay, now I'm going to let it dry fully. I'm back and I'm going to mix up some nice strong black right here into my pan. And I want it to be a thick color that's not very watery, although I will have enough water here to cover this larger area. But I'm making a really strong mixture so that it's going to be as opaque as I can because watercolor, even the black, is kind of transparent. So I'm going to just really work on making a good amount of mixture here. And then I'm going to go in and do that bottom part where our hill silhouette is. So I'm going to start from this side and follow my pencil and start filling this in. And I'm going to work quickly so I don't have a lot of backwash where I'm going over, you know, areas. I'm trying to work in one direction so I can kind of pick up my bead where I've got it. And I'm just going to work right to left on this one. And I kind of like, too, that you could see a little bit of that sky color coming in underneath uh, the top part of this uh, hill, you can see sort of that slight orange texture coming through, but actually I really like that. And I liked when that happened on the other one as well. So that's why I didn't really mind having my sky sort of coming through. Now I've got this sort of wet area here. I'm going to come in and start working on those little trees. And it's just little scumbling motions to let us know the sort of distance of this hill. And I'm not doing anything but sort of just giving my brush some random strokes for some bushes and trees and shrubbery. And I'm going to have some gaps in here to make it a little bit more natural. And I'm just sort of going quickly through and making my marks. I 
I'd say so far, there's a lot of difference here. <laughs> so I'm going to do just a couple more things up top. Let me make sure the whole thing actually is dry. Okay. So I'm going to take this sort of turquoise color that I had mixed up before. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it. And I'm going to come in here and strengthen this color a bit. Just like this. And I'm going to blot my brush quickly and sort of feather out this edge by dragging. Just like this. I don't want a very hard edge. A little bit of hardness here is fine with me just because we've got our orange there. But I just want this to be a nice, even flow of color. And I've got it blotted again, and I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more. Just like that. And then up at the top, I'm going to go back into my indigo. And kind of mix that with this blue that I've got going on here. And I'm going to darken up this corner again. I need to add some water to my brush. And just work on getting some darkness in that top corner like you can see in the painting. And I'm going to soften up this edge as well. And I'm just blotting my brush and getting that moisture in there to soften the edge. And I'm going to get a little bit more of that phthalo blue, mix it with this blue-green mixture and let that come in from this side. So I've got some color there. I'm gonna blot my brush and drag this out. While I'm waiting for the bottom to dry, there's one more thing I want to do, and that is I have these clouds kind of coming in this sort of semicircle here. And if you look at the reference photo, there's a little bit of darkness kind of coming down here. And I think that that'll kind of balance it a little bit better because this corner is just kind of empty. And I really love how this blend is going on here. But I've got some blue left over here and I'm going to mix up a little bit of a stronger um, shade and just kind of go down here just like this and kind of put that in there and I'm going to again blot my brush very well and just kind of soften the outside And I'm rinsing frequently because I don't want it to be too colored on the outside. I'm just wetting it slightly. Just like that. And I think that adds a nice touch. I might do a little bit more up here. Just like that. Again, I'm blotting and I'm just going to drag it around the outside here to soften that edge. Now this is pretty dry, so I'm going to go ahead and get that bottom painted. I mixed up some more black and I'm just going to give this a quick second coat just to darken it up a little bit. So I'm just going to do the same thing as before and work right to the left, sweeping my color across to get as even of a wash as I can 
and I'm sort of trying to keep a bit of a bead going here so that I'm not working on any dry edges. That way my watercolor can just continue blending. And it uses up quite a bit of paint. <laughs> I've got, I had a pretty good puddle there. So if you do this, you might want to just mix up a little bit more paint than you think you need. It's always better to have a little extra than not enough, at least for me. <laughs> so I like that dark level. And when you see the close up, you can still see some of that orange kind of coming through the back, which is really beautiful. But I just wanted to deepen that darkness. So I will be right back after this dries. Okay, I am dry and back so I can show you both of my versions <laughs> that I made. I like this one so much better. There's one more definition, darker color. I use the indigo rather than the phthalo blue on the darkest areas. Also, you'll see my new one has a ton more texture in general and a bigger, brighter area, which shows where I really wanted my focus to go. The hill part's pretty much the same on both. Um, the second coat made it dark the way I wanted it compared to this top one, but this one had just a lot more brightness, a lot less muddiness that you can see, and better defined cloud. So overall, I am a lot happier with my second try. And I think this is a great way to learn also. And so I'm going to give you a close up of my second attempt. You can see where we added a couple of the second coat things, the dark, but you can still see that orange in there, which is really nice. I like that coming through and then those clouds and this bright orange in the center that was the biggest thing that I wanted to capture in the painting. I thought the picture was just really beautiful. And then here is my first attempt. And you can see where I overworked some areas. You can see attempted color <laughs> changing and removal and just very blotchy and foggy overall where this actually looks to me a little bit more like a sky and not like I just swept my brush across some wet paper. So anyway, um, you never know what you might get if you try something again. So I'm really glad that I did this and caught it on video so that I could share it with you and some of the things that I did differently across both paintings. So hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it make sure to give it a thumbs up and check out some of the other landscapes that I've tried out on my channel too if you're interested in seeing more paintings like this. Anyway until next time keep creating. Bye!